Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. A major training exercise gets underway as the Royal St. Lucia Police Force increases its ability to deal with sensitive cases. Agricultural exporters gain new markets with the help of Export St. Lucia. Over $1 billion in recovery funding for the Bahamas. All that plus the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force is increasing and strengthening its capacity to deal with sensitive cases. A major training workshop for officers of the Vulnerable Persons Unit of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force was conducted Monday with support from the British High Commission. Janelle Norvell reports. Supported by the British High Commission, the Serious Sexual Offences course for members of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force attached to the Vulnerable Persons Unit, VPU, is being held over a two-week period. It is the first training workshop of its kind for the VPU and aims to increase and strengthen their capacity to deal with the sensitive cases that these officers have to handle on a daily basis. The two-week training workshop was developed, funded and facilitated by the British High Commission. UK resident British High Commissioner Steve McCready indicated that the facilitators come with a wealth of knowledge and experience that they can share with the attendees with a view of enhancing their capabilities. The UK resident British High Commissioner emphasized the importance of the workshop. You're the ones who are on the front line. You're the ones who deal with customers, not just from the UK, from all around the world, but also St. Lucians and other Caribbean nationals who face these crimes. You're on the front line, um, and without your ability, and without your skills, and without your expertise, uh, the experience would um, would be much, much worse for the people who face these crimes. So a huge thank you again. Um, again, it's another reason why this training is so important. Uh, we've heard a few of the areas which are going to be addressed throughout this two-week course, uh, which will enhance your skills and knowledge. Uh, some of those are about gathering evidence, some of those are about recording statements and others. Members of the Vulnerable Persons Unit are expected to undergo training in a number of areas, including investigation strategy, victim strategy, welfare and resilience, and victims and witness special measures, to name a few. Assistant Commissioner of Police Crusita Pelius noted that building on the expertise of this unit of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force is timely as the number of serious sexual offences perpetrated continues to rise. These offences impact negatively on the victims psychologically, emotionally and physically and are difficult to be dealt with. This as any other crime concerns law enforcement. You are fortunate to have been selected to participate in this training as law enforcement officers charged with the responsibility of investigating sexual offences. You are the ones the victims will look up to or depend on to get sexual assault offenders apprehended and prosecuted. When you investigate professionally, and are successful in apprehending and prosecuting offenders. You make it clear to the victims and citizens that this behavior will not be tolerated. The Serious Sexual Offenses course opened on Monday, 27th January 2020 at the Royal St. Lucia Police Training Academy. For the Government Information Service, I am Janal Norville. The government of St. Lucia is playing its part to ensure that farmers can meet the demands for exports in new territories. With the help of Export St. Lucia, farmers have tapped into new markets for a variety of products. In 2019, Export St. Lucia increased its role in assisting farmers to gain new markets for their products. The agency has become the intermediary for farmers who would otherwise not possess the skills to meet the requirements for exports. Chief Executive Officer of Export St. Lucia, Sunita Daniel, says that's where the agency intervened, helping agriculture exporters gain new markets. Farmers, their job is to grow. And that's all they do, and they'll do it very well for you. But their job should not be to go out into every market to look for contracts. And so that's where we come in. We get those contracts for them. We tie them in. And we've really worked very closely with the Ministry of Agriculture. We're so thankful for their support. Daniel encouraged farmers to continue to produce while they do their part in ensuring that exporters are able to meet market demands. 
the market is getting increasingly demanding and they want to make sure that you are up to standard, you meet all the standards that are expected. And so our job is to make sure that everybody is able to meet those standards and to get those markets. I just want to reiterate how important it is um, that farmers really keep to those standards because the market is not a problem. We have a lot of demand for St. Lucian products out there when we go into the market. It's really just to get the production and the standards up. Mango trading, canals, farms, perennial exports, and other suppliers of agricultural produce have been direct beneficiaries of assistance from Expo St. Lucia and are making headway into new markets. Over $1 billion in recovery funding and in-kind services was recently pledged at a private sector pledging conference for Hurricane Dorian in the Bahamas. Hurricane Dorian as a Category 5 storm battered parts of the Bahamas in August of 2019, leaving immense devastation and loss of life. The Office of the Prime Minister of Bahamas in a release following the conference said the pledges included initiatives in home building and repair, educational assistance, renewable energy partnerships, relief aid, among others. In expressing his gratitude, the Bahamas' Prime Minister, Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, said the conference was an important step in the ongoing reconstruction and rebuilding efforts. Progress on the ground on Abaco, the Abaco Keys and Grand Bahama, including the removal of debris and the restoration of various services. Despite the progress, someone visiting especially Abaco and Abaco Keys these four months later will be shocked by the scope and scale of the devastation and the enormous, complex, and many challenges of rebuilding. Though this was a generational tragedy, we must rebuild as smartly and as speedily as possible. But there is still a long road ahead. This conference and other such efforts are an essential part of the rebuilding process. We are involved in humankind and bear responsibility for rebuilding the lives and the communities affected by Dorian. The bell that tolls is the bell of responsibility which we all share as fellow human beings and citizens of the global commons. I thank all of you who have heard this call and who are answering with generosity, with hope, and with fortitude. And this is the NTN Nightly. We'll be back in a moment. Here at St. Lucia Distillers, we produce an award-winning range of rums and rum products. We export our rums to the Caribbean, North America, and Europe. Standards facilitate our entry into overseas markets. In the rum business, it is critical that our distillers and blenders get it right. St. Lucia Distillers is HACCP certified. We use two standards from SLBS, the standard for labeling of pre-packaged foods, SLNS 1-3-2014, and the national specification for rum, SLNS 12 2003. We are also a registered member of the West Indies Rum and Spirit Producers Association, WISPA. SLBS ensures that we are up to standard and world class. This message is brought to you by the Commonwealth Standards Network. Welcome back. After Derek Walcott, the St. Lucia Poetic Tradition, that was the theme of this year's Sir Derek Walcott's Memorial Lecture as part of the Nobel Laureate Festival. The lecture was presented by St. Lucian author and poet Macdonald Dixon. In its presentation, Dixon described how he stumbled on Derek's work and how it would change the trajectory of his life. About the same time, I also discovered Henry H. Breen, St. Lucia Historical, Statistical and Descriptive 1844 at the Central Library, and that book had a similar effect on me. Born at a period when the Walker twins, Dunstan St. Thomas and Leo Spa St. Helen were in their prime, 
And through them, I came into contact with Harry Simmons. I could not have been more privileged. Under these enormous influences, I learned to look inward. An exercise that was not encouraged by our regular teachers who fed us on diets of Chaucer, Shakespeare, Dickens, Goldsmith, the Brontes, and other fodder from the pages of the only literature they knew. There was a feeling of inferiority about our own after being told directly and indirectly that as a people we never produced anything worthwhile to benefit civilization. Dixon spoke about the limited hoard of books in the public libraries during his time, which according to him did not provide an impetus to create a nation of readers. Nevertheless, Dixon found himself in those libraries, which would later foster his love for writing. In St. Lucia, we were yet to hear of the emergence of C.L.R. James, Mays, Hearn, Walcott, Selvon, Naipaul. We schoolboys were not aware of BIM magazine, although there were whispers from other islands like Barbados and Trinidad that books about us existed. There were rumors of one George Lamming in Barbados and a fellow from BG writing in England who in time would emerge as Edgar Mittelhauser. Midway through the year came my apotheosis. After trespassing across the first page of 25 poems, I knew I had found the missing link to my reading fair. Dixon wanted future writers to know the value of those who went on before to pave the way for them to follow suit. We sometimes take for granted the phenomenon that is Walcott. Without realizing the immense favor he has done us writers by monopolizing the St. Lucia idiom in body, soul, and spirit with a down-to-earth pragmatism that is his distinct individuality, which in the process provides us with a yardstick longer than an English yard to measure our own work. He has mined every metaphor under the sun, beginning before we knew ourselves and learned to recognize our first scribbles. His poem, 1944, was published in The Voice in October of that year and heralded his entrance on the local stage, giving notice to the world that a 14-year-old had mastered the art of cloning Miltonic verse. The Derek Walcott Memorial Lecture took place on January 21, 2020. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next is Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Fern Aquaria. If you are in receipt of an abnormally high bill, it is highly possible that you have a leak. That leak may not always be visible. Before you contact Wasco, conduct a do-it-yourself test. 1. Record your meter reading. 2. Do not use water for 30 minutes to 1 hour. 3. Take another meter reading. If the reading changes, you have a leak. Contact a plumber to identify and fix the leak at the earliest. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, Wasco. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arquil. Monsieur Madame, the Bat Marking West Coast Sable Tape, with Formation and Gouvernement Settle C, that's a GIS, as a television national page, NTN, Capusuto, Nouvelle Arquil. Is that all? Primus Hutchinson. Pour commencer, Nouvelle Arquil, Jodia. Nous avons posé attention à la adresse du Premier ministre, Honorable Alain Chastney, pour le commencement de l'année 2020. Le Premier ministre a déclaré que l'année de cela, tout le travail est pour rosser la marche de la pour commencer le travail sérieusement, en effort pour changer la situation du pays. Déjà, il dit le problème qui peut payer à la situation pour trouver un emploi, j'ai réduit sorti 25% pour 17%. Selon le Premier ministre Chastney, la première action, c'est pour réduire et courager, avec corriger forcément qui a sous population entièrement. Le Premier ministre a déclaré que parmi ces actions que j'ai faites, c'est réduction de taxes VAT par 15%, soulagement de taxes à sous propriétaire, soulagement à sous monde qui doit l'hôpital, réduction à sous licence l'auto, doubler allocation pour le uh, programme manger à l'école et transportation. On parle de l'autre action, selon le Premier ministre Chastney, c'est l'allocation pour l'agriculture, 
adossement des systèmes de justice exécuté, commencement opération Guan l'hôpital 9, ça c'est Owen King. On est au premier ministre là, annoncé aussi une grande quantité million qui gouvernement a dépensé pour improuver chemin divers établissements et institutions au niveau de ceci. Particulièrement chemin, community centers, facilités sport, facilités santé et épouvement services l'eau ni en façade sud et en autre pays. Pour activité en façade sud, pour M. Chasné mentionné projet Pearl of the Caribbean, particulièrement Guan Kous Cheval, qui était précoce à son anniversaire journée nationale l'année passée. Pour M. Chasné déclaré que le spectacle a été mis tout au lieu de la terre, avec la tenue à la danse en plus de 7500. Avec l'autre Kous là, qui a plané, avait déjà plané, pour mi-temps, le mois prochain, ça c'est février, à l'heure pour 41 anniversaire et dépendance. Le premier ministre a regretté la peine ville de Fort Espiancé après plusieurs business de fermé en temps passé. Et le monde a souffert, choisi, laboré, mis et vie fort même, peut travailler. Mais il comporte le public là. Et puis, il y a aussi une salle de salvation qui a visité ce pays encore. Le premier ministre Chasney a déclaré qu'il n'a pas dit le projet Pearl of the Caribbean, il a dit le projet Aéroport Himanora, la WAD nouveau pour bateau touristique, projet pour redévelopper Anse de Sable et projet Canels, projet Free Zone en Himanora qui va être performé très bien. J'ai vu ça pour ça en opération. Le gouvernement KTB promet pour adresser la brise à système d'éducation pour l'année 9. Là. Malgré le gouvernement a déjà commencé à adresser la situation d'éducation depuis l'année 2016, le Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chastney a annoncé à dans ces projets que le gouvernement a déjà implémenté et aussi sa unique plan pour établir. Selon le Premier ministre, là, déjà, le gouvernement a dépensé 25 millions de dollars pour manger l'école qui a croisé. Euh, ça, c'est un arrangement pour la chambre des études aussi, fétail, kai qui était à couler, manger arrangement pour service commun avec de l'eau et plus vite. Mais il y a aussi cela qui a mis 10 millions en place pour faire divers arrangements à l'école. En bas, mais c'est l'école qui a reçu l'assistance à cela. C'est l'école La Guerre, l'école Methodist Gordon Walcott Memorial et l'école première. Ça, c'est premier, l'école première, vide bouteille. Selon le premier ministre, il y a eu plusieurs leçons et programmes neuf pour l'année 2020 avec la majorité qui fait et puis service Internet et computer. Le Premier ministre, oui, monsieur, le gouvernement Taïwan, pour le commitment à l'éducation par computer pour l'autre trois années pour venir. Aussi, plusieurs occasions pour étudier, suivre études dans l'autre pays, sans y'a pays des autres. Le Premier ministre Chasney aussi, félicité le principal neuf pour l'école Saint-Afelus, Dr. Keith Nuss, il dit qu'il a soupé pour plusieurs programmes nouveaux. Et qu'il y a ces programmes-là, ça, c'est côté établissement qui était radio cette liste qui a passé. Quand il a trouvé un studio pour enregistrer la musique, pour renforcer et indiquer la jeunesse en profession de communication et de production. Le ministre des Affaires agricoles, j'ai commencé à indiquer le public concernant la manière pour agir une économie côté la bacaille de danger pour l'environnement. Ces hommes-là, quand ils restent verts, avec une bonne santé. Selon les grands grecs, ils ont une économie comme ça, c'est un qui a éprouvé à ce bon vivre les hommes et à aider à bâtir l'égalité sociale. Le département de l'Effoué, qui est une branche du ministère de l'Agriculture, j'ai commencé en route là, avec l'officier, ça c'est l'officier de l'Effoué, M. Carl Augustin, déclaré qu'il a travaillé pour protéger les ressources d'eau et de terre. Il a ajouté qu'il a déjà engagé diverses communes en tout les groupes et organisations pour apprendre une manière pour servir les fouets et quand même du temps pour protéger les vivres et les animaux. Augustine Bayer sur cela qui s'est renforcé le service climat en faveur pour produire plus et meilleur manger. En bas, il y a un projet qui a porté nous à Ayanola. Les cultivateurs j'ai trouvé engagé pour planter plein pieds bois pour opérer quand on bat pour vent. Il y a aussi qui a établi bat avec l'autre pied bois pour séparer l'invitation avec l'autre cultivateur. Comme ça, 
Sinon, Agassin, il a servi plein fruit plutôt. L'autre pied bois, mon yo te ka servi avant. Officiel le a déclaré que ça a porté plus de bénéfices pour te et protection pour de l'eau et meilleur bénéfice économique. Et c'est comme ça notre bout nouvelle la jodia. On ka mettre au temps pour ka gade, on ka voir une invitation pour je ne puis moi encore, n'ai pas autre l'autre nouvelle la coyole et comme ka mettre au temps pour tirer à cela, monter point après ça nous ka vie égal pour continuer nouvelle à coyole. Merci au Pil Primus and here's a look at what's happening to us weather wise. Winds will be blowing from between the east and southeast near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour, becoming lighter at times. The island will experience fair to partly cloudy skies with a chance of few brief isolated showers. An increase in cloudiness with a few scattered showers is expected tomorrow. The Atlantic high pressure system will continue to generate light to moderate easterly winds across the Eastern Caribbean region during the next few days. A weak frontal trough will continue to cause occasional cloudiness with a few showers over the northern Leeward Islands over the next 24 hours. Relatively dry and stable conditions will prevail over the other Eastern Caribbean islands for the rest of today. An approaching weak low-level trough is expected to cause an increase in cloudiness and a few scattered showers over the islands tomorrow. Tides for Castries Harbour high at 5.15 p.m., low at 11.51 p.m. Tides for Viewford Bay high at 6.22 p.m., low at 1.18 a.m. Seas are slight to moderate with waves 3 to 5 feet or 0 0.9 to 1.5 meters. The sun will rise Tuesday at 6.32 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with the repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.